Call this meeting the Sholo City Council to order, show that all council members are present. Um, tonight I've asked Councilman Judd to lead us in an invocation, followed by the Sholo High School Music Department is going to sing us the National Anthem. If you'd all like to stand and join us, you may do so. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this opportunity we have to meet together in a city council meeting today. We're grateful for um, those who are in attendance today and for their willingness to participate in the, the process of, uh, that we have for our city. We're grateful for our uh, city manager, our staff, and for our first responders, our police department, our fire department, and our military personnel. We ask that thou watch over, protect them, and bless them. We're grateful for the citizens of, of Sholo and, and uh, all that they do to make this a great place to live. We uh, ask that thou will bless us at this time that we can make decisions that will, will bless our community and, and help our community to um, be in, in accordance with thy will. And we say these things in, in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We now have the high school music. Come on up. Both of you. <laughs> Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say That was amazing. Thank you very much. We let them know they were going to do that about five minutes ago. So <laughs> thank you guys very much. All right. The next item on the agenda is any citizens desiring to speak on a matter that's within the jurisdiction of the city council may do so at this time. Comments may be limited to three minutes per person and shall be addressed to the city council as a whole and not to any individual member. Issues raised may be limited to those within the jurisdiction of the city council. Pursuant to Arizona Open Meeting Law, the city council cannot discuss or act on any items presented at this time. At the conclusion of call the public, individual city council members may respond to criticism made by those who have spoken, ask to review a matter, and ask the matter to be put on a future agenda. And I do have a couple. Um, Brian, how do you, I can't, Brian? Yes. Come on up. State your name and address for the record, please. How do you say the last name? Schmidhoffen. That's almost what I thought. Deputies. Who is it? My name's Brian Shintaku, 1440 North 41st Drive, Show, Arizona, 85901. I have a problem with uh, water running between my neighbor's house and our house. I've been working with Morgan and the engineers and my neighbor. Um, we had to put $45,000 in our foundation. And he wants to put another $30,000 in our foundation. Uh, I was given a site map from city employees, and it shows where the runoffs are supposed to be. My neighbor built, well, he bought the house, it was there, I guess, built a parking space there. The water goes this way downhill. 
parking space. I have no place to disperse my water. It's just going through our houses, washing the dirt away. <clears throat> I looked up a couple places as far as the common enemy rule. They say protect your own place, but it also says you can't block a creek. And a neighbor blocked a creek when he put that parking space along our road. And from my understanding, they're going to just dig it up, put a culvert in there, and give him his parking space back. But he's fighting it. I don't know why. Um, and that's pretty much it. Is all, I, all I want is a place to disperse my water in front of my house. Our whole neighborhood has, has these trenches everywhere to divert the water so we can capture it and keep it because we all know we need water. It's a, it's a limited resource. And I'm just trying to save our land. My property, I don't know about anybody else, but our home is our largest investment and I can't lose it. And like I said, the way I understand it, he's not even gonna know that they did anything. They're just gonna put a culvert in there and bury it back up and keep him with his parking space. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Bess. Good evening. My name's Bill Bess. I live at 1420 North 41st Drive, next door, my neighbor. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council members. I'm here to tell you about a proposed drainage a project in front of my property. Public Works received a complaint from my neighbor about roadway drainage going between our houses and that doesn't have a drainage easement. The Public Works solution to, to fix this problem was to design a drainage culvert in front of my house flowing the water to the west to an existing uh, easement on the west side of my property ba based on a 1978 plan. <clears throat> on uh, April 2nd, Public Works staff met with my neighbors for the second time in front of my property to review the plan and to get their approval. Then I received a sketch showing the proposed design, including an open bar ditch across my driveway, gravel driveway, which blocks my gravel, block, block, uh, access to my gravel driveway. <clears throat> I asked the culvert to be extended and I was told it's already too long and it, uh, is in violation of the city, uh, the, the existing culvert, no, the new culvert be extended to cover up that bar ditch. I was told that the existing culvert already exceeds the city's uh, drainage design. Uh, then I, I was asked that, uh, I was told, I, mean, I told them that I parked a trailer in that gravel area. And the answer was, well, you'll have to learn to back up on a skew. The fact about this design, Public Works has embedded a design uh, to reduce the roadway sheet flow onto my property, thus resu resulting, uh, reducing the sheet flow runoff from my property onto the property, common property line with my neighbor. The, uh, neighbor. This was their, their second complaint their second part of their complaint. Uh, why, my questions are, why is Public Works getting involved in a civil issue between two neighbors? Why is Public Works design benefits, design, benefit design, the design benefits my neighbor and uh, penalizes me by taking away parking spaces and access to my driveway? Why is Public Works providing consulting engineering and drainage construction to, a be to benefit a single resident using public monies? Uh, thank you for my time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate that. Obviously, that's nothing we can debate at this meeting. Um, I, I'm sure our city manager and our Public Works Department are, are doing something with that. I mean, it, you're right. There's nothing that we can do here for sure, but we appreciate your comments. Um, but we do need to look into it and see what we're doing further. Appreciate that. All righty, next item on the agenda is the Chamber of Commerce, but 
since it's my meeting, I'm diverting to the consent calendar. Well, I, I will entertain a motion to proclaim by the mayor. Go ahead. You got the music? I the music. Oh, I forgot. They already sang. I was so impressed with the music. Sorry. Presentation by the Shoal High School Music Department. Again. I knew you were going to do it once. I forgot about the first time. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Becky Eagle. I am just here to introduce these amazing kids on behalf of Sholo High School. Um, I'm the choreographer for Phantom of the Opera, the musical that we are opening next Friday. So scary. And this is Haley. She is one of our Christines. And this is Cannon, and he is Phantom. So I'm going to let them do their thing. <coughs> Insolent boy, this slave of fashion, basking in your glory. Ignorant fool, this brave young suitor, sharing in my triumph. Angel, I hear you speak. I listen. Stay by my side, guide me. Flattering child, you shall know me. See why in shadow I hide. Look at your face in the mirror. I am there inside. Angel of music, guide and guardian, come to me your glory. few times watching them build the set in there it's absolutely amazing what they're doing I, I just can't wait to go I, I, I don't even know what date my wife said I'm going but I'm definitely gonna be there thank you guys again amazing thank you Wow okay do what April 26th through the 27th oh now yeah, we can so April 26th through the 27th at 7 p.m. May 1st to the 3rd at 7 p.m., May 4th at 2 and 7 p.m. at the auditorium. But they've redid that whole entire auditorium for the last, I don't know, two or three months. They've been working on it, so it's, it's pretty amazing. All righty, next item on the agenda, like I was going to say before, we're going to move to the consent calendar. Um, we have some people here wanting some stuff. So um, I'll entertain a, mo a motion to proclaim by the mayor proclaiming April 2024, a Sholo Junior High School White Mountain League Wrestling Championship Month. Proclaiming by the mayor, proclaiming, or a proclamation by the mayor proclaiming April 14th through the 20th as Public Safety Telecommunication Week. Proclaiming by the mayor, pro, proclaiming May 1st, 2024 as Loyalty Day in City of Sholo. Proclaiming by the Proclamation by the mayor proclaiming April 26, 2024 as Arbor Day in the city of Sholo. Wow, got a list here. Consideration and acceptance of the Sholo communication facility. Consideration of acceptance of the city campus roof replacement. Consideration of adoption of resolution number R202414. Um, consideration of a lease with general service ad administration. Consideration of a non-commercial hangout development ground lease, 
consideration of the minutes of the Sholo City Council study session April 2nd, 2024, and the regular meeting of April 2nd, 2024. Entertain a motion to accept the um, consent calendar as read. So Got a motion by the Vice Mayor, second by Councilman Adams. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion passed unanimously. First item on the consent calendar, pro proclamation by the mayor proclaiming April 2024 a Shola Junior High School White Mountain League Wrestling Championship Month in the city of Shola. Mrs. Hall. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Whereas in the 2023-24 wrestling season, the Shola Junior High Wrestling Team was crowned the White Mountain League Champions. And whereas the city of Sholo recognizes excellence and dedication by the wrestlers, their parents, coaches, and support staff, the school administrators, the student body, and the community. And whereas the city of Sholo recognizes outstanding sportsmanship by the wrestlers, their fans, and their coaches. And whereas the city of Sholo recognizes each wrestler's commitment, discipline, and desire, and the team's collective determination. Now, therefore, John Leach Jr., Mayor, on behalf of the Sholo City Council, does hereby proclaim April 2024 as Sholo Junior High Wrestling Championship Month in the city of Sholo and urges all citizens in the community to acknowledge this tremendous third achievement. Thank you. If we can have coaches or coach come up. Not yet. We got a little gift for the wrestlers. Coach Foster, <coughs> Coach Kirk. Here you go, and congratulations. Great job. And here, somebody's going to say how what happened this year. So, who wants to talk first, or first only? Hey, Coach, go ahead. Tell us a little bit about their record and how they did, please. All right. So, uh, this was kind of a record year. They they scored a hundred or two hundred and forty three points as a White Mountain League champions. I had, we had four first place uh, wrestlers, five second place wrestlers, two third and two fourth. So it was a pretty dominant win. They, they did a very phenomenal job. So, um, they, they, so we, we delayed coming to here because they also have state. And so this team went to state, the ones that could, could uh, participate there. We didn't take a full team there. Um, let me look at my notes here because uh, I don't want to mess up. So there's two different states we go to. One's an open where you could have anybody join and many number of people in each weight class. And so that's called the open state. And we took, uh, we had one, one of our wrestlers took six. We had uh, the brothers, Kirkham uh, Lockhart took six in that one. Thor took fourth, uh, Ruthie and the girls' side, Ruth Wilhelm took third, and Ava Harding took fourth. And that's, that's saying something. That's, junior high state is the entire state. It's not divisions. Mm -hmm. So you're wrestling against everybody. Then we have the junior high. It's called the Copper State. That's just for you have to have a team, a junior high team. You know, it has to be sanctioned by the school. And we took... Uh, I don't know how many we end up taking there, but we ended up with three state champions there. Uh, Johnny Wilhelm took third at his weight class. Thor Kirkham took first at his. Titan Decker took fifth. Uh, Carter Garvin took third, and Corbin Woods took first. So we had two first placers on the the boys side, and the girls side. There, there's a there's a girls junior high. Uh, wrestling and a boys junior high and on the girls side uh, we had Ava Harding took first or third and Ruthie Wilhelm took first there. Um, Ruthie um, she's a third this is her she's a three-time state champion now she's the only three-time state champion Sholo's ever had in the junior high. She's also the first three three-time state champion in the state of Arizona in the girls side. So it's quite accomplishment there. And uh, she doesn't like me to talk about her, but I'm her dad and I'm proud of her. So. Anyways. You have the right. <laughs> I'm kind of proud of her. A lot of our, our wrestlers are gone to playing baseball. And so they, they've texted me, so we don't have a ton of them here. But uh, this, is, these, this coaching staff is what's made this all possible. 
I really appreciate them, the time, dedication to, to doing that, and thank you guys all for supporting us. Well, we have, congratulations, we have a little gift for, for the wrestlers if, if they're here, if you don't mind. We have some of them. Yeah, we have some of them here. Okay, so we have Isaac Gamboa. Isaac Gamboa is not here, if both of them are here. Do you have a box? I can yeah, we'll give you this one when we're done. Lockhart, Lockhart Kirkham. Lockhart. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank Laura Kirkham. Did you use that on somebody? Or? No, no. no. <laughs> so they also got this from Taken State. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, right. Ruthie Wilhelm. <laughs> Chris Gamboa. Titan Decker. Baseball, right? Kayla White. Kayla, the cheer. Lorenzo Campos. Michael Sellers. Not here. Carter Garvin. Corbin Woods. Corbin Woods. There's a tiger. He did take first at state too, so Corbin did. So congratulations on him. Keegan Romero. Rigdon Lewis. Greg Brewer. Keegan Romero or Toddley? Let's see. Keegan Romero. Did we already talk? Toddley. Okay, Toddley. Uh, he's not here. John Wilhelm. We know he's here. Brandon Decker. And Kurt Kirkham. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you guys very Thank much. Sure. Close, John. I yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Next item on the consent count calendar is proclamation by the mayor proclaiming April 14th through the 20th, 2024, as Public Safety Telecommunication Week in the City of Shoal. This is all. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services, and whereas when an, an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the City of Sholo Emergency Communications Center, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for our police officers, firefighters, and paramedics by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety telecommunicators of the city of Sholo have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients, 
<clears throat> and whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, <clears throat> and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year. Now, therefore, John Leach, Jr., Mayor, on behalf of the City of Half of the Sholo City Council does hereby proclaim the week of April 14 through 20, 2024 as Public Safety Tele Telecommunicators Week in the City of Sholo <clears throat> and encourages all citizens and public safety personnel to join in honoring and recognizing the public safety telecommunicators of the Sholo Police Department and throughout the nation and the vital contributions they make to the safety and well-being of our citizens. Thank you, Ms. Hall. We probably can't never thank you enough. A week isn't enough to thank you for what you do. I know I've been in there from experience and watched some of the work that you all do, and it's it's absolutely amazing. But if you guys would come up with this proclamation, I appreciate it. <clears throat> Appreciate you. You want to say a few words about the work they do do? I sure. appreciate it. Thanks for having us here, mayor and council staff. Um, I think the proclamation summed it up well. Our public oftentimes sees our patrol cars out in the streets and the lights and the sirens, and they see the officers show up on scene and, you, and, and the neighbors hear the chaos and they see the officers come and kind of resolve the situation. What they don't see is the heroic work done behind the scenes. And our dispatchers are true heroes. They're the unseen heroes. They're the, the ones that bring calm to the storm before officers even arrive. Um, they calm the situation down. They get the information necessary to relay to the officers to, to do their job effectively and safely. And, and then what's interesting is they go through that crisis and that crazy uh, call and they hang up and they get on to the next one. Whereas an officer's oftentimes at a crazy call for hours, they're on to the next call. And, and our dispatchers, they're unique. They're a regional dispatch team. So they don't just dispatch for Sholo, they dispatch for Snowflake and Taylor and Pine Top Lakeside. They dispatch for five other uh, fire departments. They're not certified just doing police dispatching. They're, they're certified in emergency medical dispatching and emergency fire dispatching. So. It's not uncommon, Mayor, to walk into their dispatch center and hear a dispatcher on the phone with a family member, a loved one, going through CPR. And it's stressful. And you can hear the dispatcher, you know, one, two, three, four. And given emergency medical dispatching advice over the phone to save a life. And when they get done with that, they're taking more 911 calls and, and they're just truly amazing and they don't get enough credit or recognition and I'm, I'm grateful for at least a week a year to recognize them and honor them and I'd like if Amber and Maria could just say one or two words and they're the dispatchers and I'm talking about their job and they know it way better than, than I do if you're okay with that. Yes, absolutely. I just wanted to say thank you for this it does mean a lot especially for our whole team. Uh, I, I've worked here for almost 13 years and I love the city of Shallow. I love my job. I get up every morning and I still love my job. I love to go and help people. It means a lot when you're talking to somebody and you know who they are on the other side of the line. We're a very close community and that's one of the best things about us. Thank you. I just want to say thank you too. Um, I've been with Shallow for three years. I came from a different agency who didn't recognize their dispatchers, so to be recognized is tremendous and we appreciate it. You know, I, I, I was thinking about this earlier today, and I, and I think about the big city, right? If you're a dispatcher in the big city, and I think they got it made in the big city because when you get a call here, you're more than likely going to know who's at the other end. And I couldn't imagine going through that because, like I said, more than likely you know who's out there. You know that obviously you know the officer, most of them, but the person there even contacting or fire you guys because you're part of the community. 
And so the job you guys do, you're right, a week's not enough, but it's the least we can do. But thank you guys so much for what you do for our community. We're blessed. Thank you. One more comment, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to say that when I worked for the city and was hiring dispatchers, it was very difficult to keep people in that position. And more times than not, those city people that came to Sholo that had to dispatch for all the different areas, fire, medical, police, whatever the case may be, they weren't used to that and they couldn't handle the job. So good job and we appreciate your multitasking and always looking out for our community and our citizens. Thank you again. We have a little video we're gonna show as well. In the law enforcement world, the public frequently sees the officers. What a lot of people don't see are what the dispatchers do every single day. I can't overstate the significance of how important the dispatchers are to the public safety of our community and the safety of our officers and firefighters. So the job of a dispatcher is many, they have to multitask, so the dispatchers will be answering phones, doing CPR, answering radios, all at the same time. They have to know what questions that they need to ask to be able to give to officers or to the ambulance, fire, EMS when they're responding to medical emergencies. Well, National Telecommunicators Week, um, it happens every year, it's usually the second week of April. This year it's April 14th through 20th. And it's a national event. Um, dispatchers from across the country are recognized for the hard work that they do. And the public, um, a lot of them like to bring, you know, bring in treats for the dispatchers to acknowledge their appreciation for them. It's just really a cool week where all the attention is focused on the dispatchers. It's their week. Hi there, I'm Sheriff Klaus and I just want to express my appreciation to all the telecommunicators across Navajo County and this great state of Arizona for everything you do. You truly are the voice that keeps us safe out on the road. And we'd like to thank our dispatchers and Public Telecommunicators Week for all that they do for us. Uh, congratulate them on a job well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you and happy Dispatchers Week. You are our lifeline. You do things even though you may be busy doing something else, you're able to multitask. And uh, that's some attributes that most people don't have. Uh, so it's a very, very rare group of people that are able to do what you do. So we thank you. And I'd personally like to say thank you to our dispatchers and appreciate them for all the work that they do. I want to thank all the dispatchers out there. You are the true first responders, and you also are the calm in the storm as you try to keep everybody relaxed and calm when there's a crisis going on around them. Thank you again for all you do. We appreciate you. We couldn't do what we do as effectively as we do without you, so thank you. I want to take a minute and say uh, thank you for what you do, and uh, we appreciate it. You're so critical to, to serving this community and we appreciate you, thank you for what you do. I really miss working with you ladies in the operational role, but I want you to know how much we appreciate the work that you do and the stressful environment that you work in. We know that you're there for each one of us. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm your mayor, John Leach Jr. This morning I'm here to praise some of the unsung heroes that we have in our community, our dispatchers. You know, from my over 20 years experience with the fire department, I know what they go through. I know the stress that they go through. We can't praise you all enough for what you do for our community. Um, I just want to thank you guys very much for what you do. God bless and be safe out there. You got a week and a video. <laughs> Thank you guys again. You guys are all amazing. Please pass that on. Thank you. Next up, item on the agenda is proclamation by the mayor proclaiming May 1st, 2024 as Loyalty Day in the city of Sholo. Mrs. Hall. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to try to get through one more proclamation. <clears throat> 
Whereas in 1958, the United States Congress designated the 1st of May of every year as Loyalty Day. And whereas Loyalty Day was established as a day for reaffirming <clears throat> our loyalty to the United States and the documents upon which our nation was founded, and whereas Loyalty Day provides the opportunity to celebrate the many freedoms secured and preserved for all citizens by the brave patriots who have served in our nation's armed forces and risked their lives for liberty and independence. <clears throat> and whereas there continues to exist in the world today hostile forces that are dedicated to destroying our way of life in America, and whereas it is fitting that the citizens of the city of Sholo take time to reflect on the privileges of democracy and liberty extended to us by the institutions of American freedom. Now, therefore, John Leach, Jr., Mayor, on behalf of the Sholo City Council, proudly joins the veterans of four <coughs> wars post-9907 in proclaiming May 1st, 2024, as Loyalty Day in the city of Sholo and invites the citizens of the Sholo to observe Loyalty Day. Ms. Hall, please. Representative, come up. All righty, next item on the agenda, I believe we should go to new business. Yep. Under new business, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, geez. Mrs. Brewer, sorry about that. Would you like to give us a presentation about the chamber? I would. I bet you would. <laughs> Try to put you off again. I was cool. We were just hanging out, <laughs> having a good time. All right. Mayor, Council, thank you for having me. This is our quarterly report for the beginning of 2024. We'll go over visitors and social media numbers, quarterly financials, upcoming events, and then, of course, our big fundraiser for this year is Sholo Days. So first we have the 2023 TIC count, and I just put this up here to bring your attention to the increase that you'll see in 2024. So we have a cumulative total of 460 visitors um, that have checked in at the chamber. Um, and so just about 100 more than last quarter, so a pretty dramatic increase. Um, in March, you'll see that the number is 195, um, and we are seeing a huge amount of out-of-state visitors to our area, more so than I've seen in the past year. So word's getting out, and I think in-state visitors would have been much, much higher for March of this year, but our uh, sporadic storms last month kind of kept them at bay, but we are seeing a dramatic increase in visitors. Um, of course, most of them that check in at the chamber are visitors, probably 60 plus, um, and you can see those tracking there. Um, so we're working on ways to keep track of the more technological visitors through um, website, social media. Um, hopefully we'll have an app here in the near future to help with that. Um, and then social media, um, we've done a lot with our social media, especially Facebook. You can see the numbers there. Um, some of our posts reaching over 100,000 folks, um, and that's this area, Arizona, New Mexico. Um, Canada is another big spot for our website, social media, that kind of thing. All right, these are our quarterly financials. You can see our total income was 43 um, for the first three months. The second page gets a little hairy just because um, our net income is less 3500 and that's because this time of year we're just cutting lots of checks for show low days and sponsorships. Um, we'll be coming in, but right now we're just cutting lots of checks for bands, um, entertainment, kids zones, that kind of thing. So um, it always clears up right around show low days. 
So we are now at 302 chamber members. So we've had a 100% increase since I took over the chamber in November of the year before last. Um, so positive movement there. And what we've done is we've increased the membership benefits without increasing the annual dues. Um, so you can see here, this is what each chamber member gets when they sign up for the chamber. Um, big on social media, big on networking. That's our number one thing um, for businesses to interact with other businesses and nonprofits to promote themselves. Um, we've given them each their own page that they have a login and control over on um, our website in the directory. And then we work very hard to share our members' Facebook and social media posts um, to our 12,000 followers. So what we're doing right now is just promoting Sholo as a vacation destination through the website, social media. Um, we were also, we teamed up with the city of Sholo with Steve North to do the Arizona Game and Fish Outdoor Expo. Um, and we gave away every relocation packet I had. Um, and it was lots of folks that were interested in Sholo, um, had never had the opportunity to come up here. So we were able to answer lots of questions about that. Um, we are focusing on being a one-stop top one shop one-stop shop for all things tourism in our area um, and that's events where to go to eat where to stay um, just different things to do in Sholo I know we have lots of events throughout the mountain um, and we love to promote our chamber members and their restaurants their locations for staying um, for accommodations um, lots of ribbon cuttings, especially as it gets warmer. We have many scheduled in the near future. We do a monthly lunch and learn that is free for members the first Wednesday of every month. Um, and that's a huge networking event and has grown by about 60% since I took over the chamber. So we're partnering with the SBDC, um, MPC, the White Mountain Economic Development, and Sholo Economic Development to offer different educational seminars. We've got one starting May 9th for business owners or people that are prospective business owners that just don't know where to start, where to end, all the way from getting your licensing to QuickBooks and marketing. Um, so I'm excited about those upcoming classes because we do have lots of folks in the community that are looking for that entrepreneurship um, and to become business owners. So if we can help them, that's what we're there for. Um, one of the big things that we've done this last year is work on the exterior um, facade of the chamber. So we got rid of the um, ramps that were out there. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a snapshot of our website. <coughs> promoting the different things in tourism. So I encourage you to all go on there, check it out. We have links to the city of Sholo, to economic development, to Parks and Rec, um, just because we don't want to redo anything that you guys have done well already. We just want to promote the chamber and then send them to you guys um, and any other, the SBDC's website, anybody who's already got a website. So this was the old chamber building, um, and our signs were old and needed some help. So Vintage Sign Works came out and replaced the signage, so much, much improved. And then we also just got rid of the ramps that were out back that were kind of an eyesore. Mr. Bosley has picked those up because he is going to do um, Derby Down the Deuce this year. Um, along with the Autism Foundation. So there is not a clutter around the chamber anymore, happy to say. And then these are some of our upcoming events, our business series classes, partnering with NPC, SBDC. We have the Biz Expo this weekend, partnering with North Star Business Center, the City of Sholo, and the Economic Development. So we're excited about that. We're also doing a cyber free cybersecurity luncheon. Um, next month in partnership with the city, um, the White Mountain Economic Development, St. John's, so um, lots of stuff going on. And then next month in Summit Healthcare, we're actually having a special date for our luncheon instead of the first Wednesday of the month. It's going to be May 22nd at Summit Hospital. Um, their CEO was kind enough, Jeff, Dr. Jeff Comer, was just kind enough to join our board when we had um, a need for another board member. So. Um, they've been great, huge supporters, and we look forward to doing lots more with them in the future. 
And then, of course, we have Sholo Days, June 7th and 8th, with the city of Sholo as our premier sponsor. So thank you all for that. Um, Friday, 12 to 10, and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, just family fun. That's what we're hoping to have this year. So thank you guys for having me, and any questions? Sunshine, thank you again for everything you've done. You and your board changing the chamber around. You guys have done a great job, and I appreciate everything you're doing. Looking forward to show all days, and no, I won't get in the dunk tank. <laughs> <laughs> Already been asked a few times. I unfortunately got a couple of events that I'm doing that same weekend, but I'll definitely be there. But thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any got any got questions? Thank you very much. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Now, where do you want me to go? Should I try new logos this time? APS. Oh, APS again. That's what I was going to say. Okay, next item on the agenda is presentation regarding wildfire mitigation. This is Dean with APS. Good evening. You're a busy woman. Yeah, it, it's been a busy, it's a busy time of the year. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Janet Dean, APS, Public Affairs Manager. It's that time of the year where I come talk to you and remind you about what we're doing and to keep our community safe through our fire mitigation program. So I'm pleased to be here tonight and I really appreciate you giving me a few minutes of your time. And there we go. So we've been here the last several years talking to you about our multifaceted fire mitigation program. And as a reminder, these are some of the components in our program. Each year we are refining it, making it better, adding new tools. But these are some of the tools I want to remind you that we have that we're working on year round. We're doing vegetation management along 38,000 miles of line across the state that we've deemed in high risk fire areas. And we are doing enhanced inspections, looking for things that are broken or that need to be fixed. We have really beefed up our monitoring, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about each of these. Um, we're doing grid hardening to make our system more resilient, and we're also doing a lot of risk modeling now. So a little bit deeper dive in some of those. As I said, vegetation management, 38,000 miles of line. We're doing tree trimming and clearing along those lines. They're on different cycles every um, couple years to every five years, depending on the line and the risk. But we are going and we are clearing those lines. We are working really hard on a hazard tree program. So we have our rights of ways and our easements, and we keep those clear. But then we have wonderful partners that manage our, you know, our federal and state lands that allow us to go outside those easements and look for trees that might be sick or dying and take those out, even though they're not in our right of way because they pose a risk to our system. So we work real closely with our partners. Um, as I mentioned, inspections along our lines. We are doing this, we're using dr drones, we're doing foot patrols, we're using helicopters, but we're getting eyes on our lines and we do it after the winter, we do it um, as we go into fire season and we're looking for things that need to be fixed. Um, did a cross arm get broken during the snowy season? Is there anything that puts our system at risk when we come into fire season? Because as we know, there's a risk that's inherent with electrical equipment, and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to minimize that. Um, as I said, we're using a lot of drones. We're using infrared imaging. We're using LIDAR imaging to just look for those safety risks. Um, we have improved the way we monitor on our system. We have weather stations on our systems now that are helping feed data to us. So we know, our, we have fire mitigation specialists on staff, we have meteorologists on staff, and they are constantly looking at what is, what's out there, what's the risk level, and we now have equipment on our own lines. So weather stations, we also have cameras on our lines. Our cameras are not being used to detect wildfires for notification purposes, but they're being used to monitor, look down our lines so that we can, we can see if there's a wildfire in the area, we can, we can assess the risk to the, to the system. And then we're hardening our grid. Um, so we're looking for new technology, new, new ways to make our grid resilient when there's a wildfire. Um, we've got, if 
across our system, we are now starting to add um, this, wide, this mesh looking material at the bottom of poles in high risk area. That is really a technology that is designed to protect the poles if a wildfire comes through. And I heard it described today, it's kind of like those little, um, those little snake things you'd, you'd light and it'd, it'd be a little snake thing and it'd blow up, you know, kind of bulge out it over 4th of July. It kind of works the same way. If a fire comes through, it, there's, a, there's a reaction and it protects the pole. It, it, they kind of bubble up and they protect the pole from that wildfire coming through. And we're making these investments to protect the system, but even more importantly, to protect our communities. And then we have new risk modeling. We are using the same kind of modeling systems that, that um, you know, the firefighters use. And we are looking at where are our lines at the most risk, where are our lines going through areas that are at the most risk, and we're using all that data to make um, decisions about where we invest in hardening our grid, where, where are the most vulnerable areas, and what do we need to do about that. And all of that um, is combined with our, um, our defensible space around poles program that I've talked to you about in the past where we clear a radius of 10 feet on either side of a pole that has equipment on it that could spark. We still do that and we are continually doing that and then going back and, and re-clearing it. All of those are um, poles that are in the kind of wildland urban interface. So that's one of the things we're doing because if for some chance there is a spark, we want it to fall on ground that's not fertile for a fire. So that's, um, all of this is, is being added in. And then we've talked in the past about when there is um, risk of wildfire, when, when it heightens, we turn off equipment on our lines. It's designed to automatically try to re-energize if there's a, there's a um, fault. We don't want it trying to do that automatically during wildfire, heightened wildfire risk. We want to get boots on the ground and make sure it's safe to do so. So all of this is some of the new stuff and the more enhanced stuff we've done. And this risk modeling has led us to a new tool in our toolbox that we are going to deploy very sparingly. And before I go into it, I just want to make a caveat. This, um, this new tool is not something that's going to affect any of our lines in Navajo County or the Sholo area. But the new tool, and you've heard about this in other states, are public safety power shutoffs. It's not going to affect you, but I want you to be aware of it because you may hear about this in the state. We're taking a very surgical look um, and approach to this. We are not doing all lines. We've modeled and risk assessed our lines, and we're doing it where we think there are high weather, um, high degree of weather, high confidence that there could be weather incidents, really wind combined with dry conditions, extreme heat, and then where there could be real risk of a catastrophic wildfire heading towards a very populated, populated area um, based on how the wind blows. And we have identified 13 lines. Um, it's about, it's going to impact about 14,000 customers in northern Arizona, none of them in this area. Yavapai County, Gila County, and Coconino County. But I wanted you aware of it. Like I said, we're taking a very surgical approach to this. It's not going to be like what you've heard of in California or other states where it's days or weeks of being without power. We don't have those kind of wind events. We have taken a historical look back, and what we've found is there's probably going to be, uh, historically over the last five years, there have been four incidents, in times where we would have called one of these, and they would have lasted about 20 hours. So again, not going to impact the Sholo area, any of our customers in the Sholo area. I just want you to be aware of it because you could hear later this year that APS has had to turn power off to some customers because we're concerned about wildfire. So with that, do you have any questions? Um, can I help you in any way? Questions? No, thank you again. We okay. appreciate everything you guys do for our community for sure. Well, thank we you. appreciate you taking time to come come out here too. Of course. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda and new business, consideration of ordinance number 202403 extending and increasing the corporate limits of the city of Sholo, Navajo County, state of Arizona by annexing therefore certain territory contingency to Existing limits of the city of Sholo. Anna. Thank you. Council. 
Solo Lake LLC has approached the city about a land swap with the town of Pine Top Lakeside in furtherance of their development around Sholo Lake. A portion of uh, uh, property near Sholo Lake is within the town of Pine Top Lakeside town limits. After discussions with the Sholo Lake LLC, staff approached town of Pine Top Lakeside and discussed Pine Top Lakeside de-annexing a portion of land, approximately 60.07 acres, and the city of Sholo annexing that land. The Arizona legislature has provided a specific procedure for the de-annexation of land from one municipality and annexation to the other municipality. The procedure is outlined in Arizona Revised Statute 9-471.02. At their regular council meeting on April 4th, 2024, the Pine Top Lakeside Town Council approved the ordinance number 24-470 for the de-annexation of the subject property from the town of Pine Top Lakeside to the city of Sholo. If city council tonight adopts ordinance 2024-3, the ordinances from the town of Pine Top Lakeside and the city of Sholo will be sent to Navajo County for action by the Board of Supervisors. Following the approval by the Board of Supervisors, this action will be considered final and the subject property would then be incorporated into the city of Sholo. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Um, if I can have the clerk by unanimous consent read ordinance number 2024-03 by title only since all council members have a copy. Mayor, if I, if I may assist the clerk in reading okay. her voice is kind of <clears throat> at the end. Um, City of Sholo Ordinance Number 2024-3, an ordinance of the Mayor and, of, and Council of the City of Sholo, Arizona, extending and increasing the corporate limits of the City of Sholo, Navajo County, State of Arizona, by annexing thereto certain territory consisting of approximately 60.07 acres contiguous to the existing City of Sholo limits from the Town of Pine Top Lakeside, contingent upon the de-annexation of said territory by the Town of Pine Top Lakeside and approval by the Navajo County Board of Supervisors pursuant to provisions of ARS 9-471.02. Can I make a motion? Sure. I move to adopt ordinance number 2024-03. Got a motion and a second. Got a second by Councilman Judd. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is consideration of ordinance number 2023, decreasing the corporate limits of City of Sholo, Navajo County, de annexing 62.40 acres contingent on the annex annexation by the town of Pine Top Lakeside. Thank you, Mayor Council. Again, this is uh, part of the same land swap with Pine Top Lakeside. So in furtherance of a land swap, um, as outlined in the previous agenda item, um, staff now requests to de-annex 62.4 acres of Forest Service property within the city of Sholo limits to allow the town of Pine Top Lakeside to annex that property. The town council of Pine Top Lakeside will then be presented with an ordinance to approve the annexation. Again, the same uh, legislative process allows the uh, de-annexation from one municipality and annexation from the other. After, if the city um, of Sholo approves the de-annexation, it will, the ordinance along with the Pine Tap ordinance to annex will be sent to the Navajo County Board of Supervisors for action. Uh, once they act on the ordinances, the um, matter will be considered final and the Property will be deemed de annexed from the city of Sholo and annexed into the town of Pine Top Lakeside. Do we still have, do you have the read the ordinance as well on that one? I would like to. Please. Pardon me. City of Sholo Ordinance Number 2024 404, an ordinance of the mayor and council of the city of Sholo, Arizona, decreasing the corporate limits of the city of Sholo. Navajo County, State of Arizona, pursuant to the provisions of Title IX, Chapter 4, Article 7, Arizona Revised Statutes and Amendments thereto, by de-annexing thereto certain territory, territory contiguous to the existing town of Pine Top Lakeside limits, 
contingent upon the annexation of said territory by the town of Pine Top Lakeside and approval by the Navajo County Board of Supervisors pursuant to provisions of ARS 9 471. .02. Thank you. We'll bring it back to the council for a motion. Councilman Judd. I move to adopt ordinance number 2024 04. Got a motion. Got a second by Councilman Hatch. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, Anna. Appreciate that. Most of that, just so we can kind of understand a lot of that property, is cleaning up a little bit of property. Is it the one by Shola Lake, correct? Kind of cleans up all that property where if you if you look at it on the map there's some of their property in our city limits some of ours and it just kind of cleans up that whole area over there there's a lot of infrastructure that we were sharing that crossing and and, and it kind of just cleans up that whole area for for, for both pine top lakeside and show so <clears throat> i know we've been working on that for a few years trying to get that figured out Okay, next item on the agenda, consideration of award of a construct, a contract for weed and pest control for city properties and city building, city of Sholo project number PWOPS-4923. Mr. Austin, how are you today? Good. Good. Mr. Mayor and Council, on March 11, 2024, an invitation to bid was sent to four companies for the city's weed and pest control services. The weed control services are biannual and include the airport, three lift stations, 15 bus shelters, the city campus, designated city curbs and sidewalks, and provide monthly pest control for 20 citywide owned buildings. Three weed and pest control companies attended the mandatory pre-bid conference on March 19, 2024. Two companies submitted bids with the following results. Hydra Pest Control LLC for 24000 $894.17 and Bulwark Exterminating for $29,190. <coughs> Staff recommends awarding the services contract the city's weed and pest control city of Sholo project number PWOPS 4923 to Hydra Pest Control LLC in the amount of $24,894.17 per year for a total of a three-year period of $74,682.51. Any questions or comments? I, I, I do know there's a map on our website that shows what they're doing, and mainly it's sidewalks, I believe, to get rid of all the grass and weeds growing in between the sidewalks. It's not off the shoulder and all that, so it's mainly throughout the city and, and all the sidewalks. Questions, comments, or motions? Vice Mayor. I move to award the contract for the city's weed and pest control, City of Sholo project number PWOPS 4923 to Hydra Pest Control LLC in an amount not to exceed $24,894.17 annually for a three year total of $74,682.51. Got a motion. I'll second that. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, sir. Next item on the agenda is consideration of award of construct construction contract for Sholo Lake Spillway Campground Utility Improvement Sholo Project Number FM 7124. Mr. Hemsop. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the city's fiscal year 2024 capital improvement plan budget includes $300,000 for a utility improvement project labeled Cholo Lake Spill or Spillway Campground Restroom and Utilities. Uh, the group uh, campground located across the spillway at Cholo Lake currently does not have any utilities or restroom facilities. Uh, the first phase of the project was designed to extend power, water, and sewer utilities from the Cholo Lake Road across the spillway to the campground. A restroom will be constructed as a separate project after utilities are in place. Uh, city engineering staff designed the project with a construction estimate of $230,000. The project was publicly bid in accordance with statutory requirements with the following results. Uh, Western Grade LLC at $250,408.51. Apache Underground Excavating at $266,119. Conco Concrete Specialists at $299,925. SJ Contracting at $380,056.60 and Halen West Incorporated 
at $593,399.33. Now, staff recommends awarding the construction contract for the Shola Lake Spillway Campground Utility Improvements, uh, City of Shola Project FM 7124 to Western Grade LLC, and that amount not to exceed that $250,408.51. Uh, bid tab is attached. I'm here for any questions. Sir, is there physical campgrounds on that side or is just open camping? What is there are actually uh, designated campgrounds, but it's more of a, it's their group site. I guess it's more to, to have a, you rent the whole area and there's a large group and a small group site okay. in the area. Yeah. Thank you. Questions, comments, motions? Go ahead, Councilman Judge. I'll I move to a, I move to award construction contract to uh, Sholo Lake Spillway Campground Utility Improvements, City of Sholo Project Number FM-7124 to Western Grade LLC, in an amount not to exceed two hundred fifty thousand four hundred eight dollars and fifty one cents. Got a motion. Got a second by the Vice Mayor. All those in favor of the motion. All those opposed. The motion passed unanimously. When would they start this project? Is this something like... Um, we were waiting for things to dry out because the water went over the spillway a few weeks ago. Uh, we just went out there this week. Things are looking pretty dry. So the goal would be to do this before the monsoons hit again, before we get wet again. Um, that would be our ideal time to start, probably in June. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay, next item on the agenda is consideration of appointment of the city council member. You're... You're going to talk? Should I? Okay. <clears throat> oh. I can read it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor Council. Councilman Mike Alsup, whose term expires at their first regular council meeting in December of 2026, resigned his council seat effective March 27, 2024, due to his running for the mayoral seat in the upcoming election. <clears throat> the council formally accepted his resignation at the March 19th regular meeting. When there is a vacancy on the city council, state statute allows the city council to appoint someone to fill a vacancy for the seat's remaining term. In the past, the council solicited applications of interest and held interviews in executive session, and the council appointed an applicant to fill the vacancy. Staff advised that five candidates had submitted candidate packets for three open council seats whose terms expire December 2024 for the upcoming 2024 primary election. The council advised staff to contact the candidates and those currently sitting on the Shallow Planning and Zoning Commission to gauge interest in being appointed to the vacant council seat. Staff contacted all candidates and commissioners and four applicants submitted an application. Kenny Allen, Doug Roberts, John Wilson Golden, and Derek Whipple. The four applicants were interviewed by the council at the special meeting earlier tonight um, prior to the regular meeting. Attached every uh, all the council members uh, has a ballot showing the names of the four applicants. Council members should mark one choice on the ballot for the individual they wish to appoint. Uh, please make sure you put your name on top of the ballot as well. And then, um, if you'll pass those along to me, I'll tally up the results and indicate the individual with the most votes. At then, which a formal motion may be based on the results, and then your votes will be reflected in the minutes. Down there, <laughs> just checking. Sure, I'm here. I'm here pretty quiet. <laughs> 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 you should sit here and just <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mayor with the most votes is Derek Whipple. Okay. Uh, need a motion to accept the. Got a motion. I need a second. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you guys very much for putting your name in there. We, we certainly appreciate it. Congratulations, Mr. Whipple. Uh, looking forward to working with you. Next time on the agenda is summary of current events. Um, just a reminder the, the city's anniversary. 71st anniversary barbecue throwdown and uh, anniversary party is May 
4th, I believe. Um, it's all day at barbecue, live music. Um, we have Traegers coming to cook for us all. Um, the teams aren't really cooking for the public, but we are having a, a taste tickets. It's kind of like a people's choice, but we took teams out of it. And now we're going back to, to the uh, taste tickets. But I think they're doing like chicken and ribs. And, but Traegers cooking for everybody. So come on out, bring your lawn chairs. Um, I know God loves barbecue, so it should be great weather. Um, but anyway, looking forward to it. I believe as of today, we had like 16 teams. So um, we're going to be competing in, in four different ancillary categories. Um, they're going to be ribs, um, chicken wings, oh my gosh, tacos, and a quesadilla. And then that'll be Friday. Um, we'll have two of those. And then Saturday, we'll have the state contest as well. Each team usually cooks two steaks, and the winner gets to go to the World Food Championship in Texas. Anybody else? Real quick. Yes. Um, got a lot of new people moving to Sholo. So, uh, our summer visitors come back. Go to our museum. Check out. Go see Claire. So. Some of our, they don't leave anymore. They There's, don't. They, they stay here. They stay here. <laughs> City manager. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So just a couple of items to tell the, the, the community about. We um, have this weekend our Shuttle Biz Expo. I think the chamber mentioned that this Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the city campus gym. Uh, there's about 50 local businesses exhibiting there, so come out. It's a great opportunity to look, learn more about what our local businesses have to offer, and it's free to the public. There will be lots of demonstrations, contests, and prizes. If you want more information, call Steve North at 928-532-4124. We also have coming up our annual MLK Day of Service. This is where we have volunteers in the community that work on community projects. This is on Saturday, April 27th. We'll meet here at 9 o'clock at City Hall for the work assignments, and then we can return to City Hall for lunch after we're done with our volunteer work. And ask you to remember to wear closed toe shoes and bring gloves and a hat. We do have several projects, one at the school, one at uh, the trail in the meadow, and then one um, helping some of our, our, the um, transitional housing for homeless people. So we have all that scheduled, and we need lots of volunteers and work, so we hope everybody comes out and helps us with that. Uh, we do have uh, ongoing public works projects uh, you'll see around town, but I do want to mention uh, two things in particular because we're getting a lot of calls on them. <laughs> one is, when is the pickleball course going to be opened? And one of the things that we have to wait for on that is uh, the temperature has to reach a certain uh, temperature at night, 50 degrees. So we can't really um, put those courts on until it reaches that temperature. If we do it earlier than that, it'll just probably pill up and we'll just have to redo it. So. Have patience, but we're waiting for those temperatures to reach where there are 50 degrees at night, and we can do those courts, and then we can open them up. So that's one thing that we're hearing a lot about. And the other is the um, splash pad, and that's another one we kind of have to wait till we don't get any freezing temperatures. We're kind of shooting for May 1st, but it just depends on the weather. If it's freezing and cold that weekend, we may not be able to open it up until later. It just has to wait until it doesn't freeze at night anymore. We urge everybody to be, be patient. We, we want to get those open as soon as we can, but it's dependent on the weather. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I can tell you, we went, on, we went to the trail today, and me and my wife walked the trail, and as we were walking, we decided to go to lunch. Kept walking, and we went to Pitalian for lunch. I haven't been there. Had a good time, great food. The problem is um, our leftovers we had to carry back to the truck because we parked <laughs> at the far end. But there is going to be some public parking at that end of the meadow. Um, we're hoping within a month or so, so it's going to be nice that you could park there, go to lunch, and then walk down the, the trail. But there was a lot of people on the trail today. Um, like Councilman Adams said, the, the winter or, or summer visitors are coming. I think they've never left because it's, it's been busy all winter, but looking forward to them coming out there. But patience, definitely, and, and make right turns. No left turns in Cholo until <laughs> December when everybody goes home. Anybody need any seconds? How about scheduling meetings? Yeah, so Mayor and Council, just a couple of meetings to remind you about. This Thursday night, we have our budget town hall and then our study session. And that starts at 6 o'clock here in the Council Chambers this Thursday. And uh, after the town hall, we'll just immediately go into our, our budget study session. 
And then uh, we also have a special meeting next Tuesday, April 23rd, that's at 5 p.m. for a public hearing that, regarding a proposed annexation. The reason we have to have that is because the public hearing has to take place at a certain time. And uh, it shouldn't be a long meeting, but hopefully everybody can make it next Tuesday at 5. And then on May 7th, you approved tonight your the communication facility. Uh, that's been finalized, and we'd like to do, if you're, you guys are able, to do a little tour of that community, uh, communications facility on May 7th at 6 p.m. That would be right before our regular council meeting. So if you look at your calendars and make sure that works for you, we go over there and have a tour of the facility and look at everything that they put together there, and then we'd come over here and do our council meeting. So. And remember, our budget study sessions are open to the public, so you're welcome to join us for sure. It'll probably be a long night. More than likely, we try to finish it in one night. So we start at 6, probably a couple, two or three hours. All right. Seeing no other business before this council, I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you guys for coming.